Hello everybody, welcome back to Red Toolhouse. Today, I wanna to come inside and talk about something I think is kind of uh, important right now. So um, let's talk about freezers and some great tips on how to manage, maintain, and fully utilize your freezers. All right, so um, I don't think on YouTube I'm supposed to talk about um, things like this or things like this or maybe even things like this. But I think we got to look at, there's a chance that that kind of stuff's going to come along. And if you're homesteading, like I know a lot of you that are watching are, and of course homesteading, gardening, or just country living, as we'd say here in West Virginia, then you most likely have a garden, or you've produced protein, or you've hunted, you've done all these things, uh, either raised animals, you've hunted, or you've planted a garden, you've got a lot of food, and You've canned some, maybe you've dehydrated some, but you're gonna take advantage of the technology of freezing and you're gonna freeze it. So what, in our experience, is the best way to make sure you're maximizing your freezers and you've got enough controls in place and you're not gonna lose your stuff? Uh, well, Kelly and I, we sat down and we came up a, with a list of things that we wanna point out to you guys. And many of you probably know a lot of these, but we wanna enumerate them all so you can kinda of go down your checklist. All right, so up here at the house, we have five total freezers. Now you see five units here, so one of them is a refrigerator-freezer combo. Our other freezer's over here in the messy part of the garage, and Kelly is supposed to club me like a baby seal if I show that part of the garage. So, real quick. I didn't show you that, right? So, anyway, so that's another big chest freezer over there. That one actually is from my great uncle Joe, I think that freezer is older than I am, so it, it probably isn't very energy efficient, but it, man, it's built like a tank. But anyway, so five freezers that we have pork, we have chicken, we have vegetables, we have all kinds of things, and we have beef, all kinds of stuff in that. And that's obviously our food stores for well over a year. So if we can keep these freezers running and keep electricity going to them, then we've got protein and vegetables stocked out uh, for well over a year. It doesn't count our canning and then our uh, dehydrated stuff either. So if you have a freezer or you're considering adding freezers to your home for food storage, the first thing that Kelly and I, we kind of debate about is the benefits, which is best, an upright, like this big turkey right here, or chest freezers. Now I'm going to go out and say, I like chest freezers best. I think they're far more superior, but Kelly, she likes the upright freezer way more. And we'll hit the kind of the highs and lows of that real quick. Now, Kelly's not here. Oh my goodness, my son and his workout equipment. Put a chin-up bar in the garage, Dad, it'll be great. Well, you put it right where I stand constantly. I'm constantly walking into that thing. Anyway, so Kelly's not here to defend herself. She was supposed to be part of this video, but she's inside trying to get another project taken care of it. Hey, Time is money, right? Anyway, so the pros and cons of upright freezer versus a chest, real quick. Upright freezer, of course, you can organize and you can see everything. Here we go, let's do this. So using our magic key here. So you can see, <laughs> yeah, disregard the frozen pizza. Well, that's not homesteading. Yeah, so the, the frozen pizza. So chicken breasts, we've got vegetables, we've got bread, we've got blueberries, we've got apples, we've got tomatoes, we've got blackberries, more chicken, we've got lard, another frozen pizza hiding in there, we've got our flour, Italian sausage, we've got pork, we've got all kinds of stuff, right? And it's right there, it's eye level, you can see it all. It's, there's no surprises. It's not like you got to go digging for stuff. So that's probably the biggest pro of an upright freezer. The biggest con is what's happening right now. Where's all that cold air going? It's falling out underneath my large belly and into the floor. So that's a big issue when it comes to trying to regulate temperature and when we get into other discussion here in a second. Another con, and you have to make sure you utilize this, this key is not to keep dirt bags out 
uh, from coming in and stealing your chicken or your or your bacon, which you know, if you've got that issue, that it's good to have. But we learned the hard way that you want to use the key regularly because if something shifts in an upright, they can actually come down and hit the door and push it open to where obviously you get an air leak and then stuff starts thawing out. That's a real drag. So what about a chest freezer? So for me, chest freezer, the biggest pro, of course, is maximum capacity, maximum volume. If you would take this freezer, this upright, and turn it on its back, I could probably get 30% more material in it, right? So a chest freezer is going to allow you to do that. And it's also going to be way more efficient as far as when you open it. It's not going to have all of its cold air cascade out. It's going to sit there like a bucket. Oh, got to close the breaker box. <laughs> So when you open it up, all that cold air is still going to hang out there. Now what's the con? Well, the con is obviously what you see here. It's like, oh, there's chicken, there's ham, there's full-size ham, there's sliced ham. But I wonder what's underneath that. Well, that's the $25,000 question. So you got to get better organization and you sometimes have to go digging when it comes to a chest freezer. So all the efficiencies and more volume, but it sometimes is hard to find something when you're looking for a very specific item. So that was tip number one. What type of freezer do you want to utilize? And as you expand and get more, do you go with more uprights or do you go with more chests? You can see we have four chest freezers in one upright. So you can kind of tell who won in that situation. <laughs> Again, she's not here to defend herself. All right, so tip number two, of course, is the obvious issue that you guys are kind of screaming at the TV right now, and that is, well, what about a power failure? If you've got all this food tied up in all of these, these electronic devices, what happens when the power goes out or the individual power to that unit fails? Well, that's a big issue. And so the tip for that, of course, is backup power. Now, you can have generators. You can see uh, here I've got my small 2,000-watt generator that I can run I can actually run all of these freezers on and I have my whole house generator that's over there in the messy part and it can take care of that too. But one thing I want to show you that, you know, again, technology is changing that has really come in handy. So with technological advances in battery and, and lithium ion, man, I just absolutely love these, these small battery uh, packs, these uh, solar generators, whatever term you want to call them. This one is the Alpha ESS. and they just sent this one to me to try out. It's a thousand watt, and I've been using it um, actually quite a bit in the last three weeks. In fact, we had a power outage um, three days ago, and it was out for about eight hours. So I was actually using this to run our entire entertainment system and our internet, and we, we just sat in the dark um, that night, Kelly and I and, and Cam, and we just uh, streamed movies all night. We we're waiting for the power to come back on. That thing ran the whole thing. I think it dropped the battery down 25% or something. It's crazy. So these things work great. And this one, yeah, they sent this one to me to, to kind of point out some of the features. But you can see, obviously, it has uh, three 110 outlets, uh, AC. It has the 12-volt outlets, has USB. It has the, uh, the, the, high, uh, the higher voltage USB. It has uh, a 12 volt um, plugs. Uh, of course, it's got the input where you can charge it via uh, 110, you can charge it uh, 12 volt, in, like in your truck or cigarette lighter, or you can actually hook up solar panels to it. It also has two contact charging uh, pads on top. And of course, the little glow you're seeing in the back is this uh, light feature there that's actually pretty daggone bright. <clears throat> So let's pretend the power just went out and Kelly's monstrous uh, upright freezer is no longer working because there's no power. Well, then we can obviously come over here and we can hook up to the Alpha and kick it on. So you can see when I first plugged that in, that was a 600 watt drain. And it's like, wow, that's, that's pretty heavy, right? So if that was constant, then that thing's only going to run. The Alpha is only going to be able to handle that for an hour and a half or less. But that's the thing about freezers, of course. So you've got that compressor in there. And since I just had that open, the compressor was still running. So once you plug it in and the compressor's still running, then you've got you know, that much drain. But right now, you know, it's pulling zero watts because it doesn't need to run the compressor. That's why, that's why I like a chest freezer again, because if I open this door to get the frozen pizza out, 
that all that cold's gonna fall out and that compressor's gonna kick on again and it's gonna use more power, especially if we're using an off-grid or a battery backup situation like this. Chest freezer, I can open up the lid, get my frozen pizza, most likely, that compressor is not going to kick back on. So obviously you can use this for way more than just running your freezers, but this is a great handy thing to have. Like I said, with the power going out the way we have it, if I don't want to fire up the whole house generator, I grab one of these guys and they work great and pretty much do whatever we need to do. I have several of these units now, so I can place them around strategically. If the boys want to be upstairs and, and do stuff on their entertainment system, hey, hey, grab a grab an alpha and go upstairs and check it out or grab whatever and it allows them to to do that i'm going to post below some information about this there's an offer code and some specials right now that uh that they've allowed me to to offer you guys so be sure to check that out i like that i really like this unit this unit has um it it, it just seems to be built better than than even my jackery that i have the jackery's plastic just seems like it's a little flimsy this one's built like a tank a little bit heavier too but i like that all right, so that's tip number two is make sure you've got some sort of power backup, generator, solar panel, whatever the case may be, make sure you have that. So tip number three, ooh, it gets a little dark under the garage door. Tip number three, and this comes back to the chest freezer, is organization. And the first step of organization to me is adding dividers. So let's go over to the big boat anchor over here, and I want to show you what we've added. All right, so in this big chest freezer, which <clears throat> actually needs a little bit of defrosting going on there, you can see I just took plywood dividers and I made several of these and I put them in to divide out all my stuff. So over here I've got ground beef and whole chicken. I've got uh, larger beef cuts. And then over here I have some other grind and the, the coveted bacon that I keep hidden. But those dividers, just simple wood of course, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, you know, it's going to absorb a little bit of moisture, but being frozen, the humidity is not going to be an issue with that. So those have been in there and you can actually kind of see how the ice has formed around it. So that really gives me the ability to, to lock those in place. And I'll dig it out and show you, but below that at the bottom, I just screwed a couple horizontal boards to make feet. So it's like bookends. You just stick it down in there and once you put your, you start putting your meat in there or whatever you're going to store in there, then that sits on those feet and keeps it from sliding around. Then of course, once if it's an old freezer like this, once the ice starts to form around the lips, then it's like you've got a built-in divider. So, so do that and that helps with organization and that keeps you from running into those situations where I thought I had another ham, but I'm not sure. Well, I got to go digging. Imagine our situation where we dig through five freezers, that gets a little old. So the dividers help uh, keep all that organized. All right, so another tip along the lines of organization. Hey, look at that. Does that look good? Nice bright light there. That's <laughs> my overhead rack creates a big shadow, so I had to put my work light there. So another tip with organization that we've learned the hard way, and you got to stay up on this, but inventory and itemize your stuff in your freezers, especially your chest freezers. So you can see here on the front of these freezers, we have a list on each one of them. So what that is, is inventory we've taken and it's, it's kind of like describing your lasagna, right? So we know what's on the bottom and as you build up, then when you lift up, you say, okay, well, here's what's supposed to be on the top. If I'm looking for something down on the bottom, then uh, I know I got to go digging. And of course, what we do is we inventory and itemize those things based upon age. So the older stuff we put at the top and the newer stuff we put at the bottom. So as we eat uh, two-year-old chicken, which we do do that uh, personally, but obviously we don't sell two-year-old chicken, uh, then I have the ability to, to just grab that. It's on top. We eat that, get that inventory out of the way as we move on down. So make that list, get you a magnet, stick it to the face of that, and just be sure when you rearrange things, you update your list. That way you're not lying to yourself and uh, you're digging around and you find you know, a turkey you bought five years ago uh, and Jimmy Hoffa's foot. And you, you're like, wow, I wonder where that was. All right, tip number five. You guys may have heard of this one. This is the frozen penny trick. And I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about here in a second. And then we'll talk about some other options with technology, but give me a second to set this up. All right, so let's do the floating head shot here. Um, so 
the, the penny trick, I'm sure you guys know, is take you a bowl, a cup, anything like that, and fill it full of water and put it in your freezer so it freezes. So you've got this in your freezer, and then you just take a penny and you just set it on it. And you put it in the freezer, of course, and you just leave it there. And that's an indicator that if while you're gone on vacation or gone for a while uh, and you come back and you think your neighbor says, hey, we lost some power for a bit. I don't remember how long it was off, but I, I, think, it was, I think it was out for a while. And you're like, oh no. Yeah, are we talking a couple hours? Are we talking a couple days? Well, you can then open up the freezer and if your penny's gone, but when you turn this upside down and you see this, then you know ruh, ruh, that that had the opportunity to thaw out completely and the penny sank to the bottom and when the power came back on everything refroze so i may have some spoiled meat there that's been refrozen so that gives you the opportunity to safeguard yourself from uh, running into a whole bunch of issues now you may depending on how a uh, penny was too hot it's now stuck to this <laughs> where the props fail so depending on what you actually want to track so there's times when I do this instead of putting the penny in the dead center I'll actually put it over here on the edge because as you know as things start to melt it's the outside that's going to melt first and the penny will slide down so if you saw uh, you came back and your ice was your penny was stuck to the side here you know, well it didn't necessarily thaw completely out uh, but it still thawed out some and they also determines on where you put it. So in a chest freezer, of course, if you put it just here on top, where if you've got it full, then it's where it's gonna to have to stay, then that means if that top layer of air gets warm and you see that penny has submerged a bit, then you think, well, maybe stuff in the very bottom still okay, it may not have ever thawed out, just what was up on top. If I'm putting it in Kelly's Ugly Upright, then what I would do, of course, is keep it on the top shelf because that's where it's going to be the warmest, the fastest, and that'll give me a good determination. Or you could even do two. You could do one on top, one on the bottom, and if the one on the bottom is still good, the penny's still setting kind of high, you know, well, okay, it wasn't that big a deal. Maybe the top shelf has to get tossed out, but I can still save what's on the bottom. Now, of course, there's technology you can utilize. You can put the alarms on your freezers that if the power goes out or the temperature drops below a certain amount, then this alarm goes off and it screams and whines and wakes you up in the middle of the night uh, because the battery's gone dead in it or some other thing has failed and you're like, what in the world's going on? Anyway, you have those options and those work well. And I know there's technology out there where they can even send you a message. So if you're away, you get a message from your freezer that says, hey, I'm dying, send help. But uh, of course, in that situation, if power went out, then that technology may fail in the sense it doesn't have a network to communicate to send you that message. Uh, but those come in handy for like if, if a compressor goes out on one of these things, like Kelly's horrible monstrosity, uh, it's the newest freezer we have. Well, actually, it's the second newest. This is the newest. Second newest freezer we have. I've already replaced the, um, the um, element on that. And fortunately, I came out one morning and just saw that um, when I opened it up to get something, that stuff just wasn't quite as warm or quite as cold. And I'm like, this thing just conked out. So I was able to move everything over and get that, yeah, I was able to repair it before it was a big issue. So those alarms come in handy for those type of things where you actually have equipment failure and it's not a power shortage issue. So one other thing I recommend along the lines when it comes to monitoring power remotely is check with your local power company. Ours allows us to sign up where if we have an outage, they'll actually send us a text message to say, hey, your power's out. And most of the time, that's actually pretty accurate. They'll also send us a text message to say, hey, your power's back on. And it's kind of funny when you're home, it's laughable because it's like, hey, your power's out. It's like, no crap, I'm sitting in the dark. <laughs> But it really comes in handy when you're away. So the other day we were out, um, actually out at church, and she got a message that the power was out. So like, oh no, is that really the case? So what we do is we have an old school answering machine that requires electricity. So we call the house, and if the answer machine picks up, then we know the power's still on. Or if Timber picks up the phone and answers it, then we know uh, we can ask him if the power's out. Usually it's the answering machine that's more accurate. You gotta watch those dogs, they'll turn on you. So look at that option with your power company. See if you can sign up for those type of notifications. That way when you're out and about, you can get that notification if it's time to come home and hook up a generator or a battery source or something like that, then you know to do that ASAP or call somebody to take care of it for you. 
Well, another useful tip I would recommend is, is when, you're, when you've got your freezer, multiple freezers, hopefully you've got options to where you're going to put it. But of course, keep it out of the direct sun. Keep it in a cool, shady place if you can. You notice all of our freezers are against the back wall in the garage. So the garage doors are right here behind the camera. We've got windows over here, so the sunlight comes this way. So these don't see sunlight. And then of course over here in the spot I'm not supposed to show you, it's even darker. So keep those out of direct sunlight, keep them out of the heat. I know, I remember my grandma back in the day, she used to have a big freezer that she kept out on the back porch. People you know, do that a lot, they used to do that a lot and probably still do. Well obviously that's gonna make that machine run even harder. It's going to wear out the components quicker and it's just it's just going to cost you more electricity and cost you more headache so uh, think about where you're going to place it be strategic uh, if your wife lets you put it in the bedroom put it under the bed type of thing whatever and uh, you'll be able to uh, keep your freezer running longer and, and keep that precious bacon safeguarded so one other tip that i think this is actually one of the most important but it's my last tip is that keep your freezers full you may say, well, wait a minute, I just started, Troy, or I just emptied last year's food and I'm starting on putting new food in. How can I keep it full if I don't have food to put in it? Or how do I keep it full when I'm taking food out of it to eat? Well, even if you don't have anything to replace it with, then start filling up milk jugs of water or five gallon buckets of water. Why is that? Why, why free stuff that doesn't need to be frozen? Well, when you have a power outage, then that mass, just imagine, you know, this freezer's completely, all, all these freezers are completely full, completely full. So when the power goes out, there's this huge ice cube, right? And for all of that to thaw out, it's going to take a long, long time versus if there was one ham sitting at the bottom of that. The air inside that's going to come warm and that ham's going to thaw out in, in less than 24 hours. So here, for example, if we had a power outage in these chest freezers, I know for a fact I could go days without any power on them before there would be a thawing issue simply because all of that thermal mass or cold mass that's there, uh, it's going to take that a long time to thaw out. So even if you're just taking old milk jugs and you're filling them full of water and you're putting them in there to freeze, yeah, it's going to make your compressor run a little bit at that point. But all those jugs, when they're frozen, then they're going to be an asset for you in case you have any power outage. And in the long run, it's going to require your compressor to kick on a lot less as that mass of ice hangs out in there. I mean, just think of a cooler. When you fill up a cooler full of ice, it takes a lot longer for it to melt, right? And a little bonus tip with that, if you're taking milk jugs or water jugs, what I would recommend is if you've got uh, cleaned out jugs, potable water jugs, whether it's old water jugs or milk jugs you've cleaned out really well, fill it with potable water, stick it in there so you're filling up that mass, you're getting, getting all that cold, and then if the power goes out, uh, then you can, if you need water, like in our situation with the well, you say, well, I don't want to fire up the generator to fire up the well and all that type of stuff. Hey, grab one of the water jugs out of the freezer. As it thaws out, then we'll have potable water, we'll have cool water to drink or whatever. So you have that storage of water. So instead of just storing water up on your shelf, potable water, in case you, you run into a water situation, you've got potable water in your freezer that's doing double duty there for you. So probably one of the biggest issues with freezers, and you can kind of see that behind me, is they become a catch-all, especially when you have them in the garage. So I actually had to do quite a bit of cleanup to even shoot this video because there's just too much stuff piled up on it. So you can see some of our processing equipment still there. Um, our coffee cans we use for all kinds of things, extra cardboard, or just, it's just stuff. It just piles up. So just keep that in mind as well. You want to be able to have good air circulation around these. Don't push them too far against the wall. That way the equipment will just last longer. Well, comment below and let me know what you guys think. What are some freezer tips? Let's get a conversation going here because we only listed, you know, what, five, six, seven tips here. I'm sure there's many that you guys have. So share in comments and maybe we can keep this as like a little Rolodex of tips that when people see this video, they can go down to the comments and see what other suggestions you guys have. Well, I appreciate everybody watching. And remember, there's nothing wrong with having a big mass of food stored away for your family, for your friends, your neighbors, whatever. If the Lord calls you to feed the neighborhood because things get a little crazy, then be prepared to be able to do it. All right, take care, everybody.